Hello Mars and the Star Pioneers, it's Steve again and today our question is how long does it take to go to Mars? And we can figure that out because of Kepler's third law. Remember P is the period of revolution in Earth years, A is the semi-major axis of the ellipse in astronomical units, and Kepler's third law tells us that if we know one, we can figure out what the other is, P squared equals A cubed. Here's the orbit of Earth, and here's the orbit of Mars. Earth is traveling around its orbit about 66,000 miles an hour. It is just not practical to stop, make a sharp right turn, hop over to Mars, and get there that way. Instead, real spacecraft fly in what are called transfer orbits. Transfer orbit. You start, say, here, when Earth is here, and as you depart Earth, you fire your rockets for a few minutes to give your spacecraft a little kick so that it ends up going slightly faster than Earth already is in its orbit. And that will cause our spacecraft to go out like this. Smooth curve. We're actually in an elliptical orbit, and we want the other end of our ellipse to end up just touching the orbit of Mars. I could draw in the other half of the ellipse here, and you would see that it's an entire ellipse. So that's called an elliptical transfer orbit. By the way, back in 1925, a German engineer named Walter Hohmann used math to figure out that this kind of orbit, where you fly exactly half of an ellipse, takes less fuel at your kick down here than any other possible orbit from one planet to another. So this is called a Hohmann transfer orbit, and when you read more about space travel, you'll find Hohmann transfer orbits mentioned all the time. Anyway, since this is half of an ellipse, let me sketch in the rest here. We're not going to fly on that part at this point, but just to remind us that it's an ellipse. The major axis of this ellipse goes through here. And we know how long that is. Let's put the sun in the center here. We know that the distance from the sun to Earth is one astronomical unit, AU. And we know the distance from the sun to Mars is about one and a half astronomical units, 1.5 AU. So the major axis of the transfer orbit is 1 plus 1.5 or 2.5 AU. Now for Kepler's third law, we want the semi-major axis, that's half of the major axis. So we just divide 2.5 in half and we get 1.25 AU. And that's A in our Kepler's law formula. So remember Kepler's third law, P squared equals A cubed. A is 1 0.25, so P squared equals 1.25 cubed. And you can do that on your calculator and find out that means P squared equals about 1.95. And that means P is the square root of 1.95 or about 1.39 years. That's how long it would take to go all the way around the ellipse but we're only going to fly half of it, so our trip will be half of that, 1.39 divided by 2, about 0 0.7 years. That's how long it takes to get from Earth to Mars. That's about 8.5 months, about 255 days. Now, if you find out about real spacecraft that have gone to Mars, you'll find they almost never fly on Hohmann transfer orbits. In fact, never exactly on Hohmann transfer orbits. One reason is that the Hohmann transfer orbit doesn't have m any margin for error. If you're underpowered here just a little bit, you won't come anywhere near Mars out here and you will be in real trouble stranded in space. Also, the exact orbit that you really fly depends on what part of Earth you depart from, 
and what part of Mars you want to land on. So when you see the real orbits of spacecraft that have gone from Earth to Mars, you will see orbits that are more like that, or, or orbits that go outside and come back in. But there's some variation on the Hohmann transfer orbit. If you understand the Hohmann transfer orbit, you're in a good position to understand a lot about interplanetary travel. So a trip from Earth to Mars on a Hohmann transfer orbit takes 0.7 years. But think about this. If we launch from Earth when Mars is here, then 0.7 years later, eight, eight and a half months later, by the time we get up there, Mars will have moved on to someplace else. What we need to do is launch when Mars is back here somewhere so that while we are on our way, Mars is also approaching that same meeting point. Here's the orbit of Earth. There's the Sun in the center. And here's the orbit of Mars. And we are going to fly on a path that goes from here in our Hohmann transfer ellipse up to here. And we know everything is going in this direction. And we know the trip takes 0 0.7 years. So what we want to know is where should Mars be in its orbit when we launch from here? What's the arrangement of planets that we want at the moment we launch our trip? Another way of asking it is this. How many degrees around its orbit will Mars revolve during our trip? Well, we can do this with a proportion. In, our trip takes 0 0.7 years. One Mars revolution takes 1.88 years. During this much of a Martian year, Mars will travel X degrees around its orbit. Remember degrees from measuring angles with a protractor? Out of 360 degrees for a complete circle. So during this much of a Martian year, which is less than one Martian year, Mars revolves this much of a complete circle. It's a proportion. 0 0.7 divided by 1.88 equals x over 360. And you can do that thing you do with proportions. And you'll find out x equals 134 degrees. While we are traveling, Mars will move 134 degrees in its orbit. So back to our picture. When we launch, we want Mars to be 134 degrees behind that arrival point. That's probably going to be back here somewhere. So let's um, mark that. That angle is 134 degrees. Let's see, I can draw the rest of the straight line through here. To finish out the straight angle, I need another 46 degrees. So you want to launch when Mars is 46 degrees ahead of Earth. So we're going to label this Earth at launch, right there. And this is Mars at launch. When we launch our spacecraft, we want Mars to be 46 degrees ahead of us in its orbit. If we launch at that moment, then a Hohmann transfer orbit will carry us up at just the right speed so that we and Mars will arrive at the same point at the same time. So this is how space mission planning is done. We used Kepler's third law, we used some basic ideas about angles and proportions, and we figured out not only how long the trip is going to take, 0 0.7 years, but we also figured out what the arrangement of planets has to be for us to launch in order for us to meet Mars when we get out to Mars's orbit. 
If you'd like to find out more about this, check the next video and we will get ourselves back home.